Hi folks, BP Earthwatch here has a new video out claiming that four objects are visible now on the Stereo Ahead uh, spacecraft on HI2 and HI1, and that two of them are unidentified. So let's take a look and we'll tackle the objects as they come. Now this is uh, Sechi. This is A, and this is the one we're going to watch uh, Siding Spring come um, in. But there's a lot of activity. Guys, we've got something diving down towards the ecliptic of the inner solar system. And I'll get closer to that. There's actually about four objects on the screen. Look in the dead center there. That's Okay, let's tackle this one first. The one he just pointed out. You can see I've done my own processing of the raw data here. And I've overlaid his frame from the video on top of it. Uh, this allowed me to figure out exactly what time the image was taken since he's got it so tightly cropped there I couldn't see the timestamp. But based on the position of the asteroid, now I can figure out exactly when it was taken and uh, do some astrometry on it. So it turns out it was taken at uh, 2, uh, 209 Universal Time, February 7th. And you can go on, go on the stereo website and download the image yourself and see it. And the coordinates are match for the asteroid known as Vesta. So that one's identified now. Let's keep playing and go on. It's the one that's been bright, and it seems to be getting a little brighter. That's in the center of, of Sechi. Now we have one to the top left of that that's moving along with Okay, now the second one. I've also done the same thing. So here's the his video frame overlaid on top of my processing of the image data. And we can see that asteroid there. Uh, this I've done the astrometry on, and it's a match for the asteroid Ceres. You can see the coordinates are a match for the time that that image was taken, which was 1809 Universal Time. And again, uh, you can go on the Stereo website and download that. 1809 Universal Time, February 8th for that image. Uh, the coordinates, again, are a match for Ceres, so he has rediscovered the very first asteroid ever to be discovered, Ceres. Way to go. Let's keep going. There's one above these, and I'll show you that, that's moving down. We have one to the bottom right that's moving up. Okay, he just mentioned the one that's above this moving down. Keep that in mind. You're going to see Ceres come up again. We've also been told, and we've been we've talked about this with Michael, who, by the way, tonight at 6 p.m. Central is going to be on our blog talk show, so we're going to get some updates. Here's our two objects. Now, these two seem to be running with the ecliptic, probably asteroids that are listed. If we dig through all your... Yeah, no kidding. You're right. Very good. They are asteroids that are listed. They are two of some of the most major asteroids out there, Vesta and Ceres. Very good. Okay, let's move on to the next two. APLs and look at your uh, probably eyes on the solar system. We can probably name those two. Yep, we certainly can. But now the one above that's diving down. Which is going to be Ceres again. And this one is not listed. Oh, it's not. Okay, we'll see about that. I don't think there's uh, a JPL for it. I've checked. Oh, he's checked, has he? Well, let's check ourselves. All right, so here's this frame. So the frame he just showed. I've done the processing again, and the problem here is he's pointing at this star. Well, the asteroid he's trying to point at, A, it's very, very faint. It doesn't even come across in his video because of the compression he's put it through. Uh, and B, it's immersed with this other star. There's, an, there's an, a regular star at those coordinates, and you can't distinguish between the star and the asteroid at that time. But if you keep looking forward or backward in time, you'll see that there was, there was an asteroid at that position. It just happened to be at the same spot as another star. So in order to do precise astrometry on it, I've taken an image eight hours later where it was separated from that star, and you can see it blink to the left. If you watch where that arrow is pointing, and then watch my animation, you'll see the asteroid blink on and off just to the left of that star he's pointing at. See that? That's the asteroid. So I've taken that image, that second image, not the, the one he's pointing at because it's pointing at this other star over here, but this one where it's separated eight hours later. It's, it starts off as kind of a bulge in that star and it separates completely from it eight, a few hours later. Uh, I've taken that second image for astrometry and measured the coordinates. And it turns out it's a match for another asteroid, Pallas, another major asteroid. 
You can see the coordinates are matched. This image that I've uh, done astrometry on was taken at 1809 Universal Time, February 8th. And again, you can go on the Stereo website and download the data. Uh, I'd recommend downloading the raw data and processing yourself for maximum quality. You get some of the fainter stars you can't see in the uh, more highly processed and automated versions that you see in his video. And indeed, this is a known asteroid, and it's definitely on there on GAPL. There's nothing mysterious about it, despite what he says. Don't trust this guy. Let's move on. This one has an upward motion. Remember, there's supposedly meteor storms and debris being led from below the sun up into the inner solar system. They're supposedly watching that. Now, that would be your, uh, north, your South Pole, your Antarctic, your South America telescopes. But guys, that... Yeah, you don't need a South Pole telescope to see Pallas. Let's go on. When you see an object like this, <clears throat> it's not a comet that doesn't have a tail. Either uh, it could be a comet, but it would have to be so far away from the sun that it uh, has no, has not created any uh, comma or anything around it yet, any tail. But it's large. That's my point. These there's four stars there. You see in that line, and it's at the bottom of that star there. It's it's moving to the left. I know it's hard to see, but they're here, and it's moving up into the ecliptic. This may be one of the things. Now this is above earth and it has a downward movement he's come back to series see this see this little triangle here it's pretty distinctive if you go back you'll see it's the same thing as before it's series again he's pointing it out again as if it were a new object right there it's diving down towards the ecliptic not sure if that's listed or not we were also uh, told that possibly some of i sun's debris would be pulled back into the inner solar system because of the gravity of the sun. No, this is serious. So we're serious. dealing here with two objects, <clears throat> that one moving downward, two moving with ecliptic. Now I want to switch cameras because there's one under the earth here that's not the same one we saw before that has a slight word upward trend. Again, guys, I'm not sure how... Okay, now let's deal with this one. So, again, I've processed the raw data. Now he's gone to Stereo 1... Uh, stereo ahead HI1. You can see this little asteroid right here. I've done the astrometry on that. And it turns out it's a match for another known asteroid, Melpomene. See the coordinates here? The image I've done the astrometry on was taken at 2009 Universal Time, February 8th. You can go onto the Stereo website and get that image data. And I'll include the links, again, to all these astrometrically solved images uh, in the video description. See, once again, this is a known asteroid. He's pointing out as if it were some unlisted, unknown asteroid. It's not. It's known. Clear this is going to come through, but I'll link to Sechi where you can look for yourself. Yeah, and he didn't seem to do that either. At least I don't see it here in this description. In any case, um... Guys, don't trust this guy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And if he does, he's just lying to you. Uh, these objects are not unlisted. They are completely known, well-known asteroids. Uh, some of the most major asteroids in the solar system. And it all takes a little bit of astrometry to figure this out. And uh, Melpomene, for example, is visible well above the horizon from the northern hemisphere right now. It's not some mysterious object. So, with that, I hope you have a nice day.